Who's a pretty girl in that mirror there? What mirror where? Welcome to this kickoff for Spooky Month with the Evil Within 2G Riff View. I can't keep rhyming this whole time. Or if I did, it'd be a crime. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting mannequins. <laughs> the first Evil Within was nearly completely what I was looking for as far as popcorn horror action games go. You had stealth, you had new mechanics, you had grotesque creatures that really stretched the boundaries of what your imagination could follow. And the mangled little cherries on top were the creature designs, especially Laura and the Keeper. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, have any of you hanging corpses ever seen this eyeball before? No, no. no. Very good, ladies and gentlemen. Now I will walk up to my beautiful assistant, camera. Everyone, please, eyes on camera, camera. If you could. Aha! Yeah! Yeah! Adore! Ha ta ha! Evil Within 2 certainly does still have some pretty creepy creature design and they all look slick and just have protrusions all over their skulls and bodies, but none of them really come to the level of a Laura or a Keeper or even the main bad guy, whatever his name was. Bone saw is ready! Instead, everyone feels kind of leveled off and everything is given the same amount of love as opposed to two or three standouts surrounded by average. Sebastian is exactly why you shouldn't smoke three packs while you're trying to run a marathon. So the design and the creep factor remain, with the big design change being open world, or rather open zone, to where you travel to three or four larger areas where you can approach enemies and hordes and supplies and everything at your leisure and with some fair amount of strategy involved your strong hand off me, ew! Setting enemies on fire to truly put them down has thankfully left as a full-time gig for Sebastian. So while you're still looking at a few enemies that take more than one encounter to take down, it's usually a one-to-one -one ratio of victory or defeat, which completely works with this design shift because you wouldn't want to go back and just farm matches or lighter fluid or whatever over and over and over again to really put away enemies and make Section safe. So the game doesn't lose me there. It does not lose me in the semi-open world, nor does it lose me in the streamlined decisions they brought into the gunplay. Too quiet. Freeze house! Gunners where I can see them! where I really feel like this game lost a lot of its identities in the stem itself. The levels no longer have that unpredictability. Everything just feels so structured and you know what's going to be behind every doorway and what enemies are going to do for the most part. And it's just, it feels disappointing there. That and the tropey, just way too incoherently coherent story that they tried to approach this game with. Uh, come, come on, Sandra, just, uh, uh, just let me in. I I didn't know that I killed your dog, okay? I I, I, I thought it was a raccoon. And you know, raccoons are evil, right? It's like, if there was ever someone to take over the world, it would be a raccoon. So I kind of just saved the world. Oh! The first game story was by far worse and vague, but it worked inside of that context. You couldn't make sense of everything that was going on because it was incomprehensible what was going on. It had that Alice in Wonderland feel, which was great. And then on the flip side, you can't have a slightly better story that's still filled with all these terrible, terrible, tropey characters and one-liners. You're better than that, Bethesda, so pick a side, please. All that being said... Evil Within 2 gets a 7 out of 10 from me, still not a terrible game, and a really, really good, scary action title, if you ask me. Just not as good as the first. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.